a little bit chaotic. I think it moves best. Uh, you may have noticed we don't have a PowerPoint because uh, we're outside. So if you need a bulletin, we have some extra ones here. Let me know if you need one. I can make sure you get one. Um, Okay, so thank you for your uh, patience with us as we try something new. We're very glad to have you with us. A uh, um, couple things coming up. Next Sunday, we're going to celebrate Pride Sunday. The Sunday after that is Father's Day. If you want to make a donation, there's some little yellow sheets for flowers. If you want to make a donation in somebody's honor. Um, let's see. On the 4th of July, we're going to be worshiping from the Colonial Prayer Book. Super fun. Um, so. We're glad to have you with us as we try some different things this summer. We traditionally wear our masks when we're inside for worship, but if you want to take your mask off when you're outside, you're okay to do that because we're outside. So um, and it's pretty safe distance. So again, thanks for bearing with us as we try something new. We're very glad to have you with us and you're always welcome here. Oh God, with whom all good proceeds, 
Grant that by your inspiration, we may think these things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I hear the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, how is you that you were naked? You were from the tree of which I commanded you. And said, Woman, you gave me fruit. She gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate it. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all the animals and among all the animals. On your belly you shall go, lest you shall eat all the good fruit. But the woman and the enemy. Strike your head, and you'll strike the sea. Word for the Lord. Thank you. Working up here? Okay. okay. Uh, we're going to read a portion of, no, all of Psalm 130. You would join me in reading it responsibly. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. And your ears consider the loud voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O oh, Lord, in this hand, for there is forgiveness with you, therefore he shall be here. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O oh, Israel, wait for the Lord. For the Lord is with him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel all his sins. Our second lesson is from Second Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believe, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also in the Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake. For his grace as it extends to your May increase thanksgiving, glory of God. So we should not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. But this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. What can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. We know that if the earthly tent being today is destroyed, we have a glory to put on, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Praise be to God. Rise as you're able. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they began, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul. And by the power of the demons, he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. See, I was trying to work around the columns, but there's also this tree. So I'm going to be preaching like this this morning. <laughs> Yeah, you can't go home again. This is what I'm thinking of a lot as we sort of move back into this new world post COVID, you know? It's like, do we wear a mask? Do we not wear a mask? I feel like everywhere I go, somebody was saying this too when they came, everywhere I go, I have my mask on. Cause I'm like, wait, do I need to have this? Am I okay? Am I safe? You can't hear through this? Yes. Is it better now? Yes. Oh, oh, okay, great. Gary fixed it. He has many, many talents. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I was saying you can't go home again. But I should have known that because look what happened to Jesus when he tried to go home. It did not end well for him or for Adam and Eve for that matter. Although they didn't try to go home, but if they had, I think we can tell from today's first story that it wouldn't have gone well. When I heard that we were doing a lesson from Genesis, I was like, great, we're outside, it'll be perfect. You know, creation, God made it, it was good. But this is not the story from Genesis that I was hoping for. <laughs> this is not a story about nature, it's a story about human nature, which is not as beautiful at times. And, and we come into it too late, you know? Like we already blew it, we already messed up. Not that if we had been reading, started reading sooner, we could have been like, don't eat that, and then change the entire course of humanity. But still, it feels like it's already too late, right? It's not even the story of the fall. It's the story of after the fall. But for me, it's really a story about loss, too. When God says, who told you that you were naked? That just, like, breaks my heart, right? Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were naked? Be clear, you're not naked. You're not having that dream, okay? You're, you're all outside. You're awake and you're broke. But, you know, we, we live in a world where people make us feel ashamed of who we are, of things that are a part of our nature, right? God made us naked, but God didn't make us to be ashamed of that. I, somebody, I think it's Renee Brown, talks about the difference between guilt and shame, right? Guilt is what you feel when you did something that was bad and you got to do something to make up for it. But shame is feeling bad about yourself as a person right? We go through this with our kids, right? Yes, I am mad that you spread Epsom salts all over the bathroom and on the mirror, but that doesn't mean you're a bad person, right? You did a bad thing. We have to fix it. We have to clean the bathroom, but you and yourself are not bad. But as humans, especially following this, this story, we have this sense of shame. And it's just so heartbreaking because God came with to be with them. God wanted to walk with them in the garden. Can you imagine to be that close to God, to walk alongside God? Maybe some of you know what that's like, to live 
knowing God's will, being with God all the time. That was the Garden of Eden. That's how God created us. God said, I want to be with you. I made you in my image. I want you to help create this world. And we said, no, thank you. We don't want to be with you. We want to be you, right? We want to be able to make all the choices, make all the decisions, call all the shots. And it broke our relationship with God. Today's liturgy comes from uh, what the community called Iona, which is on an island outside of Scotland. And it's part of what's called Celtic Christianity. So Christianity is kind of an incarnational faith, right? I mean, that's our thing, that things, things become made real in the flesh of wherever they are. So when Christianity comes to a different culture or a different region, it usually takes on some of the customs and characteristics of that culture. So when Christianity was introduced in uh, like Ireland and uh, Scotland and Northern England, or what was what is now that um, the Celtic Christianity emerged from that. And I'm not an expert on Celtic Christianity, but one of the, the core things is this idea of everything is one and God is in everything, right? So it's kind of like walking in the Garden of Eden with God, right? The Celtic Christians, I think, would tell us that you could do that if you try, <laughs> if you notice how God is in nature, how God is in the people around you, how God is everywhere. So I brought us outside today because I think we've lost touch with that sometimes. To be fair, I also brought us outside because we always do it in worship outside. And I thought at the time that we planned it that we would be able to take our masks off and sing, which we can, but we also can sing now inside with our masks on. But anyway, also I wanted you to see how much work we still have to do on our ground. But we have done a lot. We're getting there. But mostly I wanted us to reconnect and remember our, our sanctuary is beautiful, right? We love to worship in there, but it's not our only home. It's not the only place that God can dwell. God can be present here. Being outside more, I don't know about you, but I try to be outside as much as I can, even though it's hot. Because it's a place where I feel comfortable not having a mask on. You know, I'm still not sure about big crowds or inside, but outside we're good. But as I've been walking around and driving to more places, I've been seeing that... Uh, tents everywhere, right? There's tents along the High Line Canal, tents under the bridges, right? That, that people live in, some by choice, and some, you know, because of circumstances they have no control over. And I, Paul tells us that our life here is kind of like, like living in a tent, right? It's temporary, it, it's always changing, it can fall apart at any moment. There's, there's a lot of guilt and shame and things that are broken. And living in a tent, I think, would be challenging, right? I mean, some people like camping. I do not, but some people do. <laughs> but if you live in a tent, yeah, it's like you, you don't know where you're going to sleep that night. You don't know how long you're going to be able to stay there. You don't know how the tent's going to hold up. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's a lot how life is, right? Even if you live in a house. But God says, I'm going to build you a different house, a better house, an eternal home. And it's hard, I think, being as we are in these physical bodies with all of our limitations to even understand what eternal is. Because we're, we, do, we don't even know, right? We can't even glimpse it. Well, maybe we can glimpse it. But it's hard to grasp. Is it that thing that like kids and babies and animals stare off into space at? You know, you've seen that, right? Like, like they see something I don't see, but I don't know what. Is it the things that we hold on to? Even as we have lives where we feel guilt and shame and destruction and devastation, those things that we can hold fast to, or is it something that's more significant, more than we can even fully understand? I think for Jesus, the real problem ran into that. He ran into a problem because of that contrast between eternal and temporary, right? So God built us a home. We said, no, thank you. I don't know if that's we were quite that polite, but and so God said, let's try again, right? God doesn't give up on us. God said, I really, really want to be in relationship with you. I want you to be close with me. I want to work with you. So God said, teachers and preachers and prophets and all these things, motorcycles. I don't know if they're and finally God said, All right, all right, I'm coming down, right? I'm gonna dwell in an earthly tent so I can show you what it means, right? How to live with me fully. And that was Jesus. 
but his friends and his family were not buying it, right? Can you imagine, you know, it's like, uh, Jesus, no, that's my brother. That's that kid I played t-ball with. I mean, they didn't play t-ball back then, but, right? They knew him. So they were like, how can he be the son of God? How can he be doing this miracles, healing, teaching stuff? This doesn't make any sense. I'm not, I'm not buying it. And they, they were like, stop, right? The beginning of the gospel, they're like, uh, get back in this house. I can just see Mary on the front step. What did I say? Get in this house. <laughs> so, you <laughs> right? Because she doesn't know what he's doing and she's scared. And it's so wild because he's healing people, right? He's teaching people about the love of God, but they haven't ever seen anything like this and they don't know quite what to make of it. And they tell him, come home. Your family is waiting for you. And he says, no, that's not my home. You're not my family. I mean, I love you. I, lo I don't think he's in this gospel saying that he doesn't like his family or he doesn't like his home. He's just saying, my home is bigger than that, right? My home is the home that God makes for me. And my family is all people, all the people who do the will of God, right? In the world that we live in that is so divided, we know the truth of that statement, right? A house that's divided cannot stand. But a house can stand if it's built on, on God, on striving for being with God and living as God would have us live. It's very odd to be giving a sermon about home right now because A, we're outside and few of us live outside. And also we just spent like who knows how long in our homes trying to get out, wishing that we could not be in them. And I think the last year has shown us that home doesn't always mean what we think it means, right? You think of home, oh, it's safe, it's comfortable, but people who love me are there. But it also is a place sometimes you really want to get out of. Sometimes it's a place you go to because you feel shame or because other people make you think that you should feel ashamed of who you are and the life that you're being called into. But Jesus reminds us in today's gospel that, that that's not what home is about, right? Home is about the place where we can remember that eternal home that God built for us and is building for us. And that is all around us, right? I know nature has its limitations. It's very hot. You know how you can always like turn your car or your house 72 degrees. Nature is lacking that feature. <laughs> there's bugs and there's insects and there's all kinds of things. But even here, we have the home that God has built for us. And if we are seeking to love one another and to love God, then I would say we're already home. Amen. You would rise if you're able and join with me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God, saying, 
God, our creator, hear our prayer. God, our creator, we thank you for the earth you have made, for all the creatures of the earth and the joy and beauty of nature. Make us ever mindful of the gifts you have given us, that we may care for your creation and the abundance of love you offer to all. God, our creator, hear our We thank you for this church, for the spaces we call sacred, for this gathered community, and for those who cannot be with us. Give us grace to grow your church and deepen our own faith. God, our creator, hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and for all the people of the world. Help us and all who govern and hold authority to see the beauty of your creation in all people as we work together for justice and peace. God, our creator, hear our prayer. God, you have given us the gift of creation. May we use our gifts to care for those who are sick and suffering, those who we love and care for, those who are strangers to us, and all those who are in our prayers this day. God, our creator, yeah. you created not only this earth, but the celestial home to which we are called. We bring before you this day all those who have died and pray that we may join them someday in your heavenly kingdom. God, our creator, yeah. for what else and who else shall we pray? Ask your prayers for all those who have no home, literally or metaphorically. All those who are on our parish prayer list, especially Kaylee. For those suffering from depression. All these prayers and those that are known to you alone, O oh Lord, we offer in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Is it anybody's birthday today? Ah, oh, there he is, Derek, 29. Young 87. Yeah, young 87, all right. And your daughters, who told me? What's her name? Amy. Amy and Aaron, all oh, right, they're born twins. Amy and Aaron. Derek, who else, who else can we pray for today? Oh, you Anniversary. Yeah. Okay, I'll get you next. I got a different prayer for anniversary, don't worry. All right. So join me and praying for Derek and Amy and Aaron. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, Derek, Amy, and Aaron, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessing to you. Blessings to your children. Blessings to you for delivering twins. I know, I know a little bit about them. Blessings to all celebrating birthdays. What about anniversaries? This mic makes me feel like I'm going to call bingo or something. Do I have an anniversary? I should be doing that. I call it an auction. David and Helen have been married for 33 years. Yay. Any other anniversaries online or here in the in the house, which is not a house, which is God's house. All right, join me in praying for David and Helen for their anniversary. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their homes may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Okay, share a sign of peace with one another and then be seated. Peace.
He was always the guest in the home of Peter and Jarius, Martha and Mary, Joanna and Susanna. He was always the guest. At meal tables of the wealthy where he pled the case of the poor, he was always the guest. Upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger, he was always the guest. But here at this table, he is the host. Those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. Those who would wash his feet must first let him make them clean. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. Jesus Christ, who sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his. I'm going to pass this plate around. Just Pass it around. I'll come back for it.
<laughs> Thanks to Kimberly for running with it. Oh, the auditory plates. Thanks to Derek for keeping us up with that. Thank you. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right for you made us most holy God, and before us you made the world we inhabit. And before the world you made the eternal home in which through Christ we all have a place. All that is spectacular, all that is plain have their origin in you. All that is lovely, all who are loving, point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know and the universe beyond our understanding, we particularly praise you whom eternity cannot contain for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus. For his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our harmless generalities, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fearless dying, his rising to life, breathing forgiveness. We praise you and worship him. Care to our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Even yet, even now, confronts us with your claims and attracts us to your goodness. Therefore, we gladly join our voices to the song of the church on earth and in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, lest we believe that our words alone fulfill your purpose, well, silent, sort of. We well, can be silent. Traffic may not. Be well, silent, and remember the one who came before, who came because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, clearing our hearts, and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, and the forgiving that Christ offers. Among friends gathered around a table, Jesus took bread and gave thanks to God and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new relationship that God made possible because of my death. Drink it, all of you, and remember me. God of passion and life, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and this cup. Let that same spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of the one whose food we now share. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus, firstborn of Mary, have mercy on us. Jesus, Savior of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, monarch of heaven, have mercy us peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is God's table and God makes a place for all people. So wherever you are on your journey, you are welcome here.
think we have any Eucharistic visitors who aren't worth listening, do we? Mike's not on. Is it on now? Okay, I'm gonna have to get really close and personal with this mic. Let us pray. We're on the post communion prayer on page 11. In gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and the cup of salvation and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. The congregation that I served in Tucson um, had a parish hall that had a little stage that would close off. And my uh, a colleague who was British told me that that was because they would do a church up there originally. It was over the original sanctuary. And then they would close the doors for the par par party, uh, party time for a coffee hour. So we don't have any doors to close, but <laughs> we, we, we do have some snacks and coffee and lemonade. So when worship is over, we invite you to stay for as long as you like. Uh, we'll turn this into our um, celebration that the peace continues as we go out into the world. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Please join me in this dismissal. Christ's food in our souls. Our food is shared by his. Christ's life in our hands. Our life shared by his. Christ's love in our hearts. Our love through his. Christ's peace on our path. Our path following you.